Salvete de Scipuli. So today we are going to learn another lesson from chapter five in Latin for the new millennium. This one has to do with the ablative case. In fact, it's the first of many cases of the ablative that we're gonna learn this year. To start with though, as always, I want to review the cases. Again, it's always a good idea to keep reviewing this information and going over it um, so that you really solidify it in your head, okay? Um, I would like you to write down all the cases and their uses. I would also like for you to write down all of these case endings. Again, writing things out, constantly reminding yourself this is how you get good at doing Latin, okay? The nominative case can be sh is used to show either the subject of the sentence or the predicate nominative, and remember that the predicate nominative is used with the verb to be and other linking verbs, but that's the only one you know so far. The genitive case shows possession, and again, you should be writing out all of these possibilities for the genitive case in the first declension, second declension masculine, and second declension neuter. The dative case, the one that you've, used, you've learned most recently, is indirect object. The accusative case is direct object. Um, we're going to skip the ablative for the moment, go to the vocative, which shows us direct address. And that leaves us with the ablative, the one that we're going to be talking about today. You already know some uses of the ablative, um, or at least you know kind of generally that the ablative can be used as um, the object of some prepositions, such as in, cum, x or a. You've also learned in this um, chapter's vocab day and ah, uh, ab, okay? But there are specific uses of the genitive, and you're gonna be learning the first one today. That is the ablative of agent, okay? The ablative case has so many different uses. In fact, um, you can sort of think of the ablative case at almost like an adverb, because the ablative case, though it does only refer to nouns, um, kind of tells you how something is functioning, okay? How something is happening in, this, in the sentence. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes you use the ablative case with a preposition. Sometimes you use it without a preposition. Um, you have learned how to translate the ablative case as by something or with something or from something, and that is generally true. Most of the uses of the ablative that you're going to learn can be translated one of those three ways, um, with some exception, okay? Now, this first specific use of the ablative that you're going to learn is called the ablative of agent. The way that it works in Latin is that you use the preposition a, ab, right? Of course, you use ab if the next word begins with a vowel, a if it begins with a consonant, plus the ablative case, of course, because it's the ablative of agent. Um, it translates as by something, um, and it's only used with passive verbs. The reason why it's only used with passive verbs is because the ablative of agent shows you who is doing the passive verb. Okay, so remember, in an active with an active verb, the subject is doing the action of the verb, right? But with a passive verb, the subject is having the action done to it, and the ablative of agent is going to tell you who is doing that to the subject, who is doing that action to the subject. So I have two sentences here, puella puera mamat and puer a puella amator. So the first one has our active verb amat, the second one has our passive verb amator, okay? And when we translate them, the first one says the girl loves the boy, and in the second one, the boy is now our subject, he is the one having the action of the verb loving done to him, and the ablative of agent, a puella, is telling us who is doing that loving, okay? The boy is loved by the girl. Okay, make sure that you have taken thorough notes. I will look at them in class, and I hope you have a lovely evening.